So I think uh, we're ready to go now. Okay, so good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everybody. It all depends where you are standing by now. So we are going to start the midterm uh, presentations for our COVID-19 virtual biohackathon. So the idea with this um, webinar is just uh, to present the achievements so far from the different topics. Um, we might have some new topics we will see from the presentations and uh, to see um, what the outcomes look like right now and where uh, some help are needed. Okay, so let's going to move uh, with uh, just a reminder about our GitHub and uh, our Twitter and the questions and answers on Slack uh, channel. Please join the QA um, channel so you can post your questions there. We will not be using the chat on this uh, Zoom presentation, but the questions and answers channel. So the webinars, we are having today a webinar right after this midterm uh, meeting. We will use exactly the same Zoom as we are using by now. And tomorrow, Thursday, we will have two webinars, uh, CWL with uh, Michael. It will be at 12 UTC and uh, one hour later at 13 UTC, we will have a presentation with Peter about Arvados. And uh, we will still have some podcasts going on between these and the next week uh, with, with the coordinators to gather some information about the different topics. Biohack Archive, we have submission guidelines. They are not definitive, but uh, they are taking shape. Thank you everybody who has contributed there. And we have the moderation process, but which is basically saying how the acceptance um, will go. So please have a look to them. Let us know anything of your thoughts via issues in there. And um, whenever you submit to Biohack Archive, please do acknowledge the event. I'm just putting here how to acknowledge the event. So hopefully we will have most of the uh, preprints in there kind of with the same text. And uh, I would suggest using COVID-19 as one of your keywords. So there is one question, Piotr, please do post this question on the QA channel now. And we are looking for your reaction on this question. Do you want a folder to host your topic, paper.md, to be created on the virtual biohackathon, biohackathon GitHub repository? So let us know by a thumbs up on, on the channel, only one person per topic coordinators, please. And the idea is that, uh, oh, tech, it should be text mining, not text mine, uh, but you get the idea. The idea is that if you do that and we know where you are hosting the Martown, uh, we will be able to easily text mine um, your uh, publications and also get structured metadata because OSF is not great for it. And we would like to do some text mining and adding some structured metadata. So just let us know. It's totally up to you. And uh, for questions at any other time about uh, Biohack Archive preprint, just please use the regular um, Slack channel Biohack Archive. Now let's going to start with the presentations for today. And we will start with Mark Wilkinson about the fair data. Mark, please go ahead. Okay. Uh, so there's the URL for the slide deck uh, just about fair. Um, so go ahead. Uh, so our focus has been primarily around fair metadata for existing research objects, um, using research object crates as the container for the highest level, and also frictionless data for, for lower level metadata like the meetings of columns. We're using Virtuoso Linked Data Platform as the back end because it gives us the ability to search. And we're using um, Bioschema's dataset profile as our initial template, which we're going to extend with some other COVID-related facets. Next, please. Um, the second objective was proteomic data verification. Uh, so we're using a data set from Pride that has fairly weak annotations. We're augmenting that with uh, is, a, is a tab and is a JSON uh, metadata marked up with Oboe Foundry, conversion of the raw data to an open format, um, 
representing this as frictionless tables in Stato, uh, packaging it as a BD bag, um, and uploading these to Zenodo to get a DOI. Next, please. Uh, so outcomes so far, uh, yesterday we had our first discoverable crate, which we're now using as the straw man to, to uh, make some, some tweaks and twiddles to, to the uh, ingestion pipeline. There's the endpoint, there's the exemplar query. So in this case, we're querying for uh, a crate that uh, contains things that have a steady design of cohort, uh, but you can query over many other different um, uh, ont ontological and keyword facets. Uh, so that was good. Um, the next slide was going to be a list of concerns, but in fact, those concerns have all already been addressed by the RO Crates team. Thank you very much, guys. So uh, yeah, so there are no more concerns. We're we're well on our way to uh, to having a lot of a lot more success. Um, yeah, outcomes from frictionless data: uh, creation of three COVID case count templates using the CDC template, schema.org, and COVID nineteen tags. Uh, the the data set that I did yesterday was from Spain. Uh, so they're also going to use the frictionless data to go deeper into that data set and mark it up, uh, and Italian data also. And last, I think, yeah. So the next steps, uh, we're going to extend the metadata capture template with some COVID relevant <laughs> such as geographic location, uh, publish descriptors um, for other outputs from this hackathon, um, and extend the URL creates behavior so that the URIs, both local and remote, can be used in place of file system references. We're working really well with the URL create team right now, they're really going fast. And uh, yeah, more frictionless proteomics data. Um, create more frictionless data, generate the JSON, and uh, put it into the Sparkle endpoint. OK, that's all. Sorry for taking so long. Mar, that was perfect. Thank you very much. We are all interested in having our data source and data resources in fair, so it's very good. OK, so I think this will be um, Noria. Noria, should I refresh the presentation or do you think it's okay? Hello, everybody. I jump in and present spontaneously um, for the anthology group. What have we been doing so far? Really, um, it was mostly gathering information. Um, so we spent a lot of time looking at things. We had calls. We have a call later on today. And we're still in that phase to really try to wrap our heads around what's needed in that space. Uh, and we identified um, quite a few areas. Um, the concrete work really has to begin. So we really have been um, gathering information. Um, we have multiple things we want to address. One is the public sequence resource. We said we want to define the metadata um, for that data submission. And we're working on it. Um, in the discussions, we realized that um, there is an ontology need for for some things COVID, that are COVID specific. So, for example, the quantitative traits um, and in that space, we think there there's stuff missing, and we um, we're discussing that how to model that, etc. And we think about um, using Shex and Owl to do this stuff, obviously, because if we contribute to existing ontologies um, and create new standards potentially for things that are missing. Obviously, that might be an, an, an OWL thing to do. And for the validation, we think about using Shex or potentially JSON schema validation, something around, around that. What do we need? Um, we would need more time. We work a lot. We keep pushing. Um, but time flies. But I think that's the same for every group. Um, and that's it for me. Thank you, Thomas. In case uh, you need some Shakes help, there are some uh, experts on Shakes. Uh, Thank on the you. YouTube I already channel. wrote uh, a message to Jose. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Good. OK, so let's going to move to the pandemonium. So we will have Eric Garrison presenting. Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm Eric. Yeah, so the pan genome group has been kind of divided in, in supporting a lot of other efforts that are going on. But we do have uh, a group where we've been chatting. And, and so one of the things we've, we've done is actually break out uh, a different subgroup, which is focusing on direct assembly of viral sequences. And so we, we're actually applying a, def a number of different methods to do that, to try to see what, what works and what doesn't. Um, it, with direct RNA sequencing, it's possible to look at a whole viral genome in a few, in a few reads. The problem is just 
kind of processing the data in a, in a simple way. And, and so we're, we're exploring that. And, uh, and then also there's, there's some interest in the group of, of actually using this RNA-seq data to look at uh, the transcriptome and, and then do assembly of the transcriptome and inference of, of interest and features within that. And uh, yeah, just in general, we're, we're hanging out and talking about different pangenomic methods. Uh, I provided a link in case anyone was interested to, uh, to a page that describes a bunch of them. Thanks. Okay, perfect. We will all be um, looking at your news on the general channel in case you need any help, as you say here, that you will ping people. Thank you, Eric. Okay, Thanks. let's go into move to the Pandinome browser. Um, we will have Simon or Simon, not sure how to pronounce the name, uh, here. Hi there, this is Simon. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Okay, awesome. So initially we started with an already existing prototype of a Pangenome craft browser. And luckily, a huge amount of smart and motivated people found a way to us. So we uh, can be much more productive now. And what we are nearly finished with is a kind of a sequence uh, view on the nucleotide level. Uh, zooming and a uh, huge amount of people were working hard to um, optimize our code base. Also, we are in a close collaboration with uh, German Bollmann. Um, so in the end, we will have all the relevant data in a Sparkle endpoint. And everybody with our visualization can then just create the endpoint and view the current um, COVID-19 punch genome. Next in our list are annotations, and metadata, and maybe a phylogenetic tree. And what would be really cool is that each time uh, on, in the public sequence resource, a new GFA appears, there will be also a publicly available visualization of that and updates automatically. So we might need help in the, uh, and to uh, tighter collaboration with annotation resources and knowledge graphs. And I'm not sure there is already a phylogeny group, so maybe we'll head out to you too. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Simon. Um, I saw German share some tips about knowledge graph, so maybe it would be a good idea to share it on the general channel because we can see that there are more people uh, with interest in that subject. Thank you. Okay, let's going to move to workflows. Uh, I think we will have two presenters for workflows, but the first one will be um, Michael or Mikhail Hoya. So please uh, hello. go ahead. Hello, this hello. is Michael. Michael, please go ahead. Oh, do you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay, great. Uh, so yeah, being the uh, workflows group, we've been in the middle of uh, lots of conversations within different uh, interest groups, and that's been uh, a little bit hard jumping around the different Slack channels, but uh, it's been exciting as well. Uh, so uh, the progress we've had this week uh, so far, we've had a lot of progress on the uh, viral recon uh, workflow as part of NF Core. Uh, that starts from reads and uh, generates consensus genome sequences. It also has several de novo assemblers, and so we're getting uh, assembly uh, graphs and sequences out of that as well. Um, and we're looking at how to sort of take the next step with that workflow and integrate it with the public sequence resource and into the pan genome and pan genome browser uh, workflows downstream. Uh, separately, there's been uh, a workflow generated uh, first in Whittle, later in Nextflow, and then finally in CWL uh, for going from a collection of consensus genome sequences and building a pan genome graph. And uh, with help from uh, folks in the public uh, sequence resource group, that has now um, been enabled on Arvados as a, a workflow that's triggered whenever new consensus genome sequences are uploaded. Um, and so the, the next step for that is to figure out how to get other workflows to upload their consensus genome sequences to that same resource. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and then, is, then what, what's next uh, for the viral recon uh, workflow? Um, 
We're going to be adding uh, SRA support so that the workflow can either start from FASTQ sequences or pull them from SRA. Um, we're talking about adding a different alignment-based consensus workflow um, to BioRecon or perhaps uh, in CWL separately. Uh, again, we're hoping to connect all of these different workflows together. Uh, the gene expression group has also reached out to us, so we're, so we're trying to help as well. And then uh, hopefully uh, we'll get to an endpoint where we can um, make these workflows more fair. Uh, we do know how to register those, so that's something I think we'll be able to do this week. And then also it would be nice if we could actually build our crate objects out of the results of the workflow, and that's something we'll, we'll need more help with, but something I hope to get to this week. Thank okay, you. that's great. I'm pretty sure you will get uh, some help from the fair people to get uh, these research objects totally fair. Okay, thank you. Let's going to continue with the next uh, slide, still on the workflows um, uh, subject, but with a different presenter. Yeah, hello, I'm Dries. Yeah, hello, please go ahead. Yes, ma'am. I have added a standard operating protocols onto the Michael's GitHub repository, which is uh, the coordinating repository for the COVID-19 biohackathon. And uh, preliminary work is going on its conversion to CWL scripts. One ready state script is ready, which is WDL script for GATK4. Future work for bo both the scripts, WDL and CW, uh, common wor workflow language script will be enabling over Spark MapReduce framework and deploy over cloud infrastructure to benefit citizen science and virtual scientific community. So I will uh, add those preliminary work into BioHackathon archive and go for the mature collaborative work with Michael and other people who are be uh, expert into the area and who are likely to be working, continue working into the area. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much, Hamburich. Thank you, ma'am. Now, let's go into move to the workflow hop with Carol, please. Hello. Uh, so we've been working on the workflow hub. Uh, the workflow hub is uh, a registry that's being developed in the EOSC Life project and uses metadata based on CWL, RO crate, and bioschemas. So here we're fast tracking that work into building a registry for COVID workflows. And uh, so our aim was to build a registry for COVID workflows. Um, so we have stood up the registry instance and organized the project structure that should be finished today. Uh, the, the instance is already up. The organizing the project structure should be finished today. We even have a logo. We've cleaned up the bioschema profile for registering the workflows. We've separated out the metadata for registration versus the metadata versioning for the workflows themselves because we have to work out uh, requirements on credit and contribution around uh, whether you're registering something or whether you were the author of those workflows. And we've also been working on incremental um, metadata uh, gathering through the user interface. So once you've uploaded, you can actually then tweak your metadata and also uh, external linking to data sets, particularly necessary for Galaxy. We've been debugging issues with the uh, workflow RO crate and uh, doing quite a lot of work with uh, the fair data topic with Mark, uh, sorting out issues in the RO crate spec, which we've updated. And uh, we have been mainly focused on Galaxy and SnakeMake workflows because we have those to our hands, particularly vPipe. Ivan's uh, workflow is our kind of golden example for a SnakeMake workflow, particularly generating abstract CWL for the workflow descriptions. So we're well on the way. And we will have by the end of this hackathon a um, workflow hub repository, uh, workflow hub that you'll, will persist beyond the hackathon. So what's next is populating the workflow hub and uh, making sure that we've got the features and documentations for supporting it post hackathon in place and to finish the updating of the RO crate spec, particularly for the fair data uh, topic folks. Um, what the help is that we need is we need some more workflows. 
and uh, a bit like Ivan's, for example, in particular, next flow experts and examples. So I was interested to see Mikel's uh, presentation because he had two next flow workflows there. We have had a bit of trouble getting hold of next flow people and next flow workflows. And it would be great, Mikel, if you could join our stand up. We have a stand up at, um, every morning and every late afternoon uh, at, uh, at 10 o'clock. Uh, CEST and at five o'clock uh, CEST the details are on our documentation page to do with this hackathon if you could join our next stand-up that'd be great and we can help perfect thank you so much Carl uh, just uh, one quick mention here we have heard about bioschemas um, mentioned by different presenters we don't have any particular topic for bioschemas at this biohackathon, but it has been used by different topics and different groups. So if you have any questions about bioschemas, please join the Slack channel because we do have one uh, in case you need more information there or any sort of support we will be there. Thank you. So let's go into more uh, to the matching learning that will be presented by Philip Davies. Can you hear me? Yes? Yes, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Okay, so um, uh, I apologize for the sparseness on this uh, slide. I'll try to fill it in with uh, explanation. So um, we've got some feature extraction methods that we've taped out in some Jupyter notebooks um, for some camera-based clustering analysis. Um, and I think we've got a, uh, also a feature extraction pipeline. Uh, pipeline might be a little bit grandiose, but at least a, a method taped out for um, the MHC estimated epitope comparisons we're doing. So I should probably start and explain that, uh, what our tasks are that we've identified. So we've got uh, uh, four different lines of inquiry we're going, uh, we're going through. We're going to try to do uh, RNA secondary structure analysis um, uh, by uh, extracting uh, RNA secondary structure sub features and see if those are uh, predictive to some of the labelings we have. Um, as I'm sure everyone knows, getting reliable metadata is tricky, um, but we have a few labels along um, different phenotypes as far as um, human versus non-human pathogen versions of coronavirus, and then in terms of specifically SARS-CoV-2, um, we have labelings for different tissue isolates, so we're hoping that maybe we can build um, models that are able to discriminate between some of these phenotypes uh, using these different feature extraction methods, including RNA secondary structure. Um, we are also doing a uh, KMER based kind of bag of words uh, feature vectors for um, amino and nucleic acid space to see if we can find uh, variables in those um, that can explain some of these phenotypes. Um, for MHC specifically, what we're doing is we're trying to compare uh, common cold variety coronaviruses with um, the new one, uh, the one that causes COVID-19 to see if we can estimate in silico um, whether there would be cross-reactivity in certain uh, antigenic regions. Um, so uh, what we'd like to do is um, see if we can get some of these predictors and then create annotations that we can pass along to maybe the pan, pan genome browser group. We need to, I'm going to try to assign somebody to reach out to them so we can figure out what data formats they need to incorporate. Um, but generally, our, our, what we need is just more data, better data, and metadata. So, um, but we're, we're gathering that slowly, you know. As they say in uh, the data science, 80% uh, of the work is just getting the data prepared to be analyzed. So that's what we're work, working on mostly. Perfect, thank you very much, Philippe. Let's go into move now to knowledge graphs. I think it will be Alex Garcia or Justin Ruiz presenting. Okay, but uh, maybe I can say a couple of words from the knowledge graph as they presented um, on Sunday. They are working mainly on, on two um, different projects. One is a knowledge graph for literature. They are working with the SciBite um, annotated collection. And they are um, working on an end-user uh, faceted browser. Um, I know that they, they have been um, advancing already on, on the um, end-user interface because they have a knowledge graph uh, already populated now. 
that's what I know from this project. Let's go to see. The other one is um, led by Justin Reed. Uh, sorry, Justin Reed. And uh, they are working more on a knowledge graph um, with uh, not only literature data, but also from, from different um, resources. And the idea is uh, to also add some machine learning on top of it. Uh, they have different data, as we can see here, about human protein interactions, gene annotations, uh, drug related data, and, and also some publications. So they are still working on the ingestion on, on the on the data, and uh, they need some developers. Uh, but um, well, probably they will be able to clarify a little bit uh, what kind of developers they want their full stack web developers or machine learning developers, etc. So let's going to see what what they tell us uh, later in this presentation or via the question and answer channel. Let's going to move now to text mining and analysis. Um, so we have the presenter Juan Banda. Juan. Yes. Hi. Okay. Hi. Yes. Yeah, so, so the project that we spun off for this was that uh, uh, using a uh, Twitter data set that we released 152 million tweets of uh, COVID-19 chatter. And the questions that we're working on answering and we're kind of halfway-ish done through it is that we're trying to characterize the information and misinformation around, you know, potential treatments. So for this, what we're trying to do is identify, you know, the people that are tweeting about drugs. If they're retweeting somebody, you know, where is this coming from? And to see if we can collect, you know, at least the common resources, because most people retweet the same tweets and actually retweets are pretty prevalent in most Twitter data sets that are not clean. So we're trying to take advantage of that to see where all the sources are coming from and see which sources are you know legitimate which sources are not so we kind of uh, on, on that step of finding the drugs generating misspellings on them and then we're starting to characterize and trace that information sources the other project we're working on is to identify symptoms and twitter users meaning that you know let's see how many users are mentioning or claiming symptoms which you know it's not as trivial as you know, just annotate tweets and then say, yeah, yeah, this tweet's talking about symptoms. We still have to attribute, you know, uh, who's just retweeting somebody, who's actually talking about a news article and who's actually saying, you know, I have, I had, my family member had those kinds of things. And we're using uh, some sort of, you know, a, a snorkel and some uh, machine learning techniques to do that. So, so far we annotated 100 million tweets. Uh, with SNOMED mesh terms, this will allow us to have a corpus that we can actually you know, use later on for those machine learning models where we're going to attribute tweets. And uh, we need to expand our dictionary for misspellings as well. And uh, we need to remove those noisy tweets where, you know, there might be bots but, or some similar things like that. Uh, so, yep, that's our state for now. And we're uh, in flux getting this uh, sorted out. Thank you. Thank you, Juan. Um Nice to see this, uh, this work about uh, Twitter. We didn't see it on, on the previous presentation, so it's good to see um, you are working on this uh, tweet uh, thing. Thank you, Juan. Let's go into morph now uh, to another topic. Oh, did you talk about, no, no, no. We have another presenter for this one. Thanasis, could you please Hello. jump in? Thank you. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, please this is ahead. Thanasis. And um, we have a second project uh, under the text mining and analysis group. Uh, it's about uh, applying topic modeling uh, algorithms on uh, COVID-19 related texts, like uh, the scientific uh, papers in the COVID-19 dataset. Um, so far, we, uh, we completed the data collection uh, we collected three different data sets. Uh, the first one uh, consists of the abstracts of the COVID-19 papers. Uh, the second one is, uh, uh, co comprises uh, the uh, COVID-19 full texts. And finally, we also uh, gathered uh, tweets uh, from one day uh, from the COVID-19 tweets IDs data set. Uh, we are not sure that uh, uh, we will uh, um, use them, but uh, if uh, we manage to do it uh, until Friday, uh, it will be nice. Uh, also, we have uh, performed a uh, preliminary analysis. Uh, we uh, 
we used LDA uh, to produce 50 uh, topics based on uh, on the A code dataset, the dataset with uh, abstracts of the code 19. Uh, we created uh, a demonstration uh, page uh, that uh, presents the produced uh, uh, topics uh, in the form of tag clouds. And uh, we have identified a couple of uh, problems uh, right now, and we are trying to solve them. Uh, what's next? Uh, we, uh, we are trying to use uh, the method of coherence score analysis and elbow uh, to, uh, to identify a, a proper number of topics. Uh, our indications uh, uh, show that uh, uh, this uh, would be around 20 topics uh, based on the preliminary data. Um, we also uh, want to, to, to use a better cleaning process for, for our input data and uh, then uh, interpret again the results based on the improved models. Uh, currently, six people are involved. Uh, it's okay for now, but uh, any help uh, is welcome. That's for me. Thank you, Tanasi. So, anyone interested in text mining and analysis, uh, please uh, join the channel, join the discussion. I have seen that uh, some people have added links to their slides. That is great. Thank you for that. Please also make sure that you are adding all this information to your wiki pages. So we have record of all the different resources that you are using. Thank you. Now, oh, let's going to move to Wikidata. I will do that presentation on behalf of all the, the group. So on Wikidata, uh, we have kind of six uh, different uh, um, small projects. One about a COVID global dashboard, uh, another one about a Wikidata subsetting. So we can have like a subset about uh, COVID related data, another project about complexes and viruses in Wikidata, another one about the preprints, um, information, for instance, from bio, uh, from bio archive and from uh, um, med archive. It would be wonderful if we can get bio archive in there as well that we will put in a different wiki base. Uh, we are, have been working as well on Wikidata and Federation queries. And we have been working as well in bioschema scrolling into a different instance of, of wiki base as well, based on something that has been done for schema.org markup as well. So the achievements uh, that we have in our Wikidata group so far is um, we have, um, good number, I would say, of uh, shape expressions on COVID-related com concepts. For instance, uh, complex, preprint, pandemic, clinical trial, hospital. There are good good number of, of uh, shape expressions there. And I remember um, the ontology group mentioned the, the shape expression, so maybe we could do some collaboration there. We have uh, wiki basis running for preprints, and I think we were establishing already one uh, for bioschemas, and we have been working on documentation as well in these. Uh, what is next for our group? We will, we will continue developing related schemas, meaning uh, shape expressions. We still need uh, to do a little bit more about the infrastructure and the um, wiki base instances that we are putting together for the different threads that I just mentioned. And we will work on extraction of uh, subgraphs. And uh, the idea with the, um, with the shape expression is to, to see whether we are getting valid uh, information regarding the model that it is behind them. And uh, we will use the Muse, the Muse is a crawler for bioschemas to get uh, some statements out of it helps and skills that uh, we would need to continue. Um, so, well, people with knowledge on, on Wikidata DOM and subsets of Wikibase as well, and UX design for the um, schema editing. Um, I think is yet another Shex expression um, tool. The, the name is uh, something like that. Don't remember right now, sorry about it. Um, but uh, yeah, we are welcoming a new um, elements in there. And if you want to give it a try, then we will share the, the information about it. So this was about Wikidata. 
I think now we can move to the next one, which is the bicycle. Uh, Laila, Laila. Oh, yes. Laila, if I may. Uh, I'm really happy. So, uh, so the project third, the slide of project three in the previous uh, channel, text mining and analysis has not been updated. If you can reload your... Uh, for text mining, okay, yes, yes, of course. Let's go into back uh, to text mining. Just give me a moment. I sure, sure. will refresh the presentation. I didn't see kind of anything happening, but okay, it was updated. And let's go in to locate the one that we want. Text mining on the graph uh, would be no, not this one. Um, this one, project three. Okay. So, uh, so, uh, so I'm, so I'm Ali Hajj. So this, uh, Yaqub, Ali Ibrahim, and Natalia mm -hmm. and I are working on a pipeline to extract information from PubMed. We are basically, uh, if you can go on the next slide. Yeah. Uh, so we're basically on the, on the second step now, training and processing the raw text. After we have uh, retrieved the text uh, using this this pipeline, we would be able to, of of course, use uh, come up with the approach to uh, get the most frequently used words from all those abstracts. Uh, moreover, we would be able to, uh, in a schematic, easy manner, explain the pathways which the scientific community thinks uh, are adopted by either by the antiviral drugs that are being considered or uh, or by the SARS-CoV-2 itself. So so that, that's pretty much it for now. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you. I know that there are other groups, I buy type of member, who are working on an annotated collection. Uh, so maybe you can identify some similarities in there with them. OK, thank you very much. Wikidata, we covered it already. And now we can move to biostatistics. Uh, Yane, please. Thank you. Uh, in biostatistics, our goal is is to build models and review models for for the epidemic process of the, of the COVID nineteen, uh, and find some parameters for the models relating to the basic reproduction number, incubation periods, and so on. Uh, so far, what we've done is we've Review the, the existing epidemic models. The, there are quite a few of them, and most published work has been using quite simplistic models, which doesn't, for example, separate between different age groups. Uh, we've had a look at the uh, literature for, for the model parameters, like the incubation period, average time in, spent in hospitals, uh, basic reproduction number of, of the disease and there are estimates uh, but the issue we found is that they vary a lot between studies uh, so for example for the basic reproduction number we have estimates between two and six so what we have done in addition is we build a, a software su suite for modeling the, the local epidemics uh, within a each country with the SAIR model, compartmental, so we can include different ages and, and uh, the, the social interaction patterns between ages, restrictions on, on them. And this is where, what we have done, done so far. Now, what we are planning on doing for the next Few days is is uh, fitting the share model to various locations, just to see how the parameters change within uh, country. I mean, in in different countries, uh, how do different kinds of restrictions that have been placed uh, affect these parameters? Uh, and for example, how does weather patterns, uh, average temperatures, mm, humidity, UV index, do these have any effect on, on, on the model parameters? And then finally, when, when we have 
this uh, parameter extraction for different locations ready. Uh, we turn to, to, to machine learning to, to find patterns in, in the parameters to see what is it really that affects the, the basic reproduction number of the disease, for example. Uh, this is where we are now. If someone wants to jump in and, and help us, uh, coding is pretty much done. So what you need to be able to do is, is run a Python software and that's it. Uh, thank you. I think we can move on. Thank you, Yane. Okay, so if anyone is interested in this project, please uh, visit uh, their GitHub. And if you see any improvement there, just please uh, let, the, let the developers know. Thank you very much. Okay, let's go on to move uh, to the next one, uh, COVID um, phylogeny. So, Roger, that is you. Yes, hello. Uh, am I coming through? Yes, it, yes we can great. hear you. Good, yeah, thank great. you. Okay. Uh, yeah, so um, the uh, vision of this group is, uh, in, in very general terms, to be able to build a uh, phylogeny uh, on the basis of public, publicly available viral genomes, and then to combine that phylogeny with uh, data that's potentially relevant uh, connected to these different uh, samples that have been collected, so maybe uh, clinical data, and then be able to map those data on the tree and see if there's any sort of topological structure to that. Uh, and so there's a, a bit of uh, pre-work that's been uh, going on. So initially, uh, I, I, I'd done some experimentation to figure out, okay, is there some phylogenetic signal in the coding regions of the virus? Because that would be neat, and we could just partition the genome in these different CDSs, align those individually, and do interesting things such as look at um, signatures of selection, and oh my God, uh, wouldn't that be you know, useful and interesting? Turns out that doesn't work so well, because actually those coding regions are very conserved, uh, so there's not a lot to look at at all. So uh, on to the uh, non-coding regions. And so then, uh, okay, we are in the process of uh, assembling some data sets that we can use for that. Um, principally, we're now aiming at just as, as stuff to play around with at um, the viral genomes that are uh, at uh, uh, NCBI, so that's like a couple of hundred, like slightly less than 400 at this point. But that's obviously growing, and um, also uh, obviously we are anticipating data coming in from uh, elsewhere, including from other groups working here, such as the uh, uh, sequence uh, repository kind of group and the pen genome group. Um, but uh, either way, that probably raises the issue of the multiple sequence alignment. Um, so there's a little bit of a scalability challenge here. Uh, so it's a couple of hundred uh, genomes, and it's like you know 30,000 uh, bases or something like that. Um, and so you're not just going to run that through like MAFT or Muscle on your laptop. It's just a bit too much. So that's just the kind of the, the challenge for today to deal with that. Um, might be an option to uh, see if there's some sort of a divide and conquer approach where, where you chop up the data in a bunch of uh, batches, uh, align each of them, uh, and then do profile alignment relative to one another. Uh, or maybe there's something clever that can be done with the pen genome data to convert that into uh, a format that is uh, a good input for uh, any of these phylogenetic inference uh, programs because you know obviously they have their own uh, idiosyncratic formats like everything else does. Um, so that is one of the sub activities. Task one is to uh, okay get at a multiple sequence alignment that is in a format that is uh, that can be consumed by something like RaxNL or IQ tree or or programs like that. Then uh, the uh, next challenge, uh, 
or which is kind of taking place in parallel, uh, task two is um, extracting metadata from these uh, sequence records, which might be potentially interesting to plot onto the tree. And now it's, it's again, it's a little tricky to get uh, good clinical data, obviously, even if only for privacy reasons, but maybe that's a little bit there. Could also be things such as basic demographics or geography or what have you. Um, and so here then, part of the challenge is kind of a data integration challenge, which is a good exercise for us as well. Like the tips on the tree will be the accession numbers of these public sequence records. So they could also be potentially for other resources, just as long as we keep the bookkeeping good. Um, and link those up with basically the primary keys in our uh, data. So basically just imagine a giant spreadsheet with one column having the accession numbers and then the other column having the other data that we want to map onto the tree. So that's another subtask that's going on right now. And then by the end of the week, we would like to be able to um, plot those data onto the tree and uh, write that up in a little uh, biohacker archive uh, manuscript. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, all of the things that are, are listed here on the slide are uh, subject to change. Um, more data is coming in, and of course, we want to be scalable in that. And there's probably different approaches that we can try to get nice sequence alignment. And uh, the metadata on the tree is also subject to change. But, but the overall vision is to basically come up with a big tree that we can plot things onto and have it be based on, on public data. So part of this has a little bit of conceptual overlap also with things such as next train, except you know they're okay, they have they have very nice data, except that's the GIS, GIS aid data. Um, so that's not so great for us. And also we want to be complementary and sort of add on to what other groups are doing here at the hackathon, uh, so the public sequence resource and pan genome activities. Uh, that's it. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Roger. Yes, indeed, uh, the collaboration uh, intertopics is very intertopics is very 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 important for the bio hackathon as well. Okay, let's going to move to the next one, annotation on structures, and we will have Gerardo for this one. Um, hello, all right. Um, thanks for um, for putting this up. Um, so to update on the on the annotation on structures topic, what we what we have worked on and what we have working well so far is. Uh, to actually be able to uh, upload annotations that are extracted from data. I, um, I show an example here on, on, on the right, which can to showcase, in a sense, what, what useful things can be done with it. Here you see, at the same time, where we predict the ATP binding site to be, and where we see differences to the sequence of, of SARS-CoV-1. Of SARS uh, and you can nicely see how well conserved the ATP binding site is, uh, just um, just from that. Um, some annotation efforts were started. They're mostly independent efforts um, that, that are being done. Annotations are being extracted from, from structures in the PDB, uh, from literature uh, review, from, uh, uh, from annotations that are for SARS-CoV, from predictions on where disordered regions are in the genome. Um, we're also working on getting variations from, from the data from next train that was up to a certain degree to the to the to the to the previous one. So we're basically bypassing the GIS8 problem by getting the process data directly from 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 next train. But of course, this can be changed um, in, in the future. Um, we also looked at a couple of possible additional annotations that we could look at. Uh, that's uh, processing gly uh, glycosylation sites. Uh, and map them onto structures, integrating results from, from other hackathon topics. There's a lot that, that could be done there. Uh, and also to look at protein-protein interactions from, from resources for, uh, of, the, of the EBI. Um, so, so, so far, the, the work is in progress. There's, there's not much uh, yet 
to be shown on these annotations. They're, uh, they're, they're working on them. And so we're just waiting to see uh, more code being pushed, more annotations being pushed, so we can test and review and, and integrate them all. Good. Thank you very much, Gerardo. Yes, there have been some uh, work about complexes on the Wikidata and other groups as well. Yes, so we will see uh, what all the complex data that we get. Okay, let's go to move to a translation. The presenter will be Dasunori. So please go ahead. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yeah, I the translation group. Yeah, the, they're not so much uh, updated, but um, there are some uh, parallel uh, working ongoing here. So one is uh, we are collaborating with Wikidata team and Andrea kindly gave us some suggestions of the items of, uh, that to be translated into several languages. And we are working on, and uh, also uh, the country, there are not so much items to be translated, uh, listed up from the script. So he is now working on to improving the script to uh, list up much, much more uh, items to be translated. And also, uh, we uh, actually, I obtained an account of localized.com. The localized service is for some uh, platform for translating any uh, language on the application. So I tried to use this service. And next, also, uh, we prepared an improved translation of this next screen dot all the services. So this content is uh, in country the very uh, some uh, very easy or not so much uh, detailed Japanese version. So one team member tried to improve the translation. So the next step is uh, first of all we try translating them and also uh, the improving the script to list up the relevant Wikidata items. Yes. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Jasonari. Good to see mm -hmm. that uh, some items in Wikidata can be improved via the translation mm -hmm. efforts in this group. Thank you so much. Let's going to move okay. now uh, to Serratus. We don't have a slide here, but we we did have a presentation. Anyone from Serratus that uh, wants to share? Uh, I, I have presented this one at the beginning, the first presentation, but I, have, I haven't been involved in this group for these days. So I don't know. But, and I think uh, core members are still in, in, in the early morning and they're, they're not awake. So maybe they will update something in, in the final presentation, hopefully. Yes, good. I mean, they still have the opportunity to update the slides. So whenever anyone right. comes back to the slides, so we can have more information here later. Let's going to move then to scientific software packaging using Debian. This is Michael. Please go ahead. Hello, thanks. Uh, we've had a really productive event. Um, people might have not seen us working because we're using IRC and Telegram and Jitsi. Um, so we actually had a bunch of newcomers to packaging, as well as some uh, longtime Debian contributors who've never done work on scientific software. Um, so it's been uh, really productive getting everybody up to speed. Um, we're, we've also seen some packages relicensed that we've had a really hard time that they weren't totally free software, like this LockFit library, which actually um, frees up a lot of software for uh, Conda and Debian and everybody. So um, yeah, don't waste the pandemic to ask people to fix their licenses. So uh, still happy to teach people how to do software packaging if they want to help out. Um, and you'll see more from us in the future. Thanks so much. Thanks, Michael. Please uh, remember that this group is not used in a Slack channel, but IRC channel and they have the information on the wiki if you want to join. Thank you. Let's going to move now to the gene expression with uh, Mariana. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. 
Okay. Um, so, I mean, we started with one uh, or two particular projects and then it kind of evolved to six different projects. So I'm going to explain to you a little bit of how we are doing each of them and how they are integrated with each other. So, for instance, after a lot of uh, literature research um, and also taking RNA-seq data from cells infected with SARS-CoV-2, um, also uh, taking these data to find out genes that are differentially expressed and also to find out regulatory regions that uh, might be uh, differentially expressed. Um, also taking into account Project 2, in which we try to find um, RNA binding proteins which could potentially target the virus. So based on these, uh, we'll build a list of candidate genes and um, this list will then feed projects three and four. So project three would look at these genes in other um, comorbidities data sets, for instance, diabetes uh, or uh, young versus old people or hypertension or other tissues like gut, which are also um, uh, maybe uh, uh, attacked by the virus. And then we'll look uh, how are these genes, these selected genes in these data sets. And on the other hand, um, project four would go more into how can we control the, the expression of these genes, if the, the expression could be, for instance, uh, inhibited or in this could in turn treat the disease and of course we don't want this to be uh, only um, um, mainly papers online we actually want this to go into uh, I mean everyone here want this so we want this to find uh, the clinicians and nurses and everyone working on it so there's another project that's uh, more related to this and we also want uh, reproducible science, so we are trying hard to work with workflows and uh, also the NFCore to build some pipelines that will be uh, easily and very much reproducible. So where we are now, next slide please. Sorry about the too many, too many things on the same slide, but uh, it's just like a, a short summary of uh, each of the projects. So. Uh, on the viral infection global analysis, we already have the generated list of genes specifically to SARS-CoV and the regulatory information. So now we would like help from immunologists and virologists to actually take a look at these genes and see if any of them make sense uh, in, the, in this particular infection. Uh, on the second project, on human-viral interaction analysis, we already scanned the viral reference genome for uh, matches between uh, human RNA binding proteins. And we already have these matches. Many of them may be false positive, so we are trying to find ways to filter this. And also we would need help from people who are also experts on RNA binding proteins. On the third project, uh, this one is, was actually waiting a little bit for the list of genes to actually start. So uh, we're still on hold on this. Um, and the fourth project, um, I think uh, we already are comparing our seq data. We have to, we have to do uh, more um, look into the selected gene list. But uh, there are already some RNA seq data sets that they are using for drug targeting. And also here, we would really like the the help from actual like, immunologists to see if there is something meaningful, uh, biologically speaking. Um, for the fifth project, we. Uh, so this, this is mainly to how to make all of these results uh, into the hands of clinicians. And uh, we are working with Omopomics uh, to integrate clinics and omics data. And uh, of course, we would love to have uh, the, the help of clinicians to actually tell us what they expect to see from what we are analyzing. So what, is the, what do they want to... Uh, what are their basic uh, uh, questions and how can we help them answer? And in workflows, we are already uh, made or found Docker images for all tools that are used in projects one and two. And uh, we have already set up a virtual machine for uh, several registered users to, so that we can share all of the data. Um, NFCore is also helping us create a next flow for project one. And uh, we would really love the help from FAIR uh, data experts on, I mean, on all of these uh, data sets we are using. 
So please feel free to enter our GitHub and help us, please. Thank you very much. Uh, nice to see the way that you are harmonizing the different projects that you have in your topic. And um, maybe someone from the workflows groups, because they are working on uh, research um, objects, maybe they could help uh, with uh, with the metadata that you need uh, for fairness and so on as well. Thank you, Mariana. So let's go into move to home learning with uh, Riotta. Hi. Hello, Riotta. Please uh, go ahead. Yeah. We are making home learning materials uh, for those kids at home. And achievement so far, we are writing five tutorials draft and also set up a collaborative environment because Google Collaboratory often causes conflicts. So we have prepared Jupyter Notebook for uh, the Visual Studio code in order to edit concurrently. So if you are interested in such environment, um, um, let us know so that we can share the knowledge. And uh, for the next step, uh, we will complete all tutorials and we will translate the materials into several languages. So if you have some ideas, for more tutorials, uh, please check our wiki page and uh, please add your um, materials, uh, tools, and any tutorials. And also we are happy to have your uh, language skill to, for, for translation. Thank you. Thank you, Ryota. New opportunity for the translation topic as well here with yeah. the home learning. Thank you mm -hmm. very much. Uh, now let's going to move to public sequence resource. Maybe Thomas. No, this is Piotr who's going to present. Okay, Piotr, please go ahead. Um, yeah, so we have um, a meta project in a way where we're trying to tie things together. And there have been some questions about our goals. Um, so let me explain that um, we are not trying to duplicate the work of uh, GS GIZ8 or you know, EBI's repositories, but we are creating um, an example uh, number of workflows. And we are, you know, we are trying to lower the barrier to entry for people to upload their data. So what we've done first is we created a command line interface for FASTA uploads. So if somebody has a faster sequence of, a, of the virus, they can, with the command line, push it into our cloud storage, you know, which, is, which is running on Arvados, Arvados. Um, you don't need a password, you just need to run the script, uh, which is already quite amazing. And, um, and from, the, from the workflow the output at this point, which is shown in the diagram, we get a number of outputs, and one of them is the <coughs> pen genome in the form of a GFA. So all the, all the viruses that have been uploaded in the past and the new one that is uploaded by this user will generate a new graph. And people can download that data and explore it. So in the next step, we are going to build up on this uh, facility where we um, are going to allow for raw data to be uh, uploaded, so BAM files or FASTQ files. Um, and that's ongoing work. Uh, ultimately, what we want to do is we want to have um, um, graph-guided uh, assembly. Right, we, but this is actually a, a topic of research, and particularly in Eric Garrison's group. Um, so we're not ready for that. So currently, we're just opti op opting for a low-hanging fruit, where we do um, assembly based on a reference genome. Yeah, so the, the assembly will lead to, a, to a, again to a FASTA file, um, which will be added to the graph using a, you know the the, the, the the running workflow. Now it's all data oriented, so the inputs are data and the outputs are data, and what we are uh, pushing for now is that other people use this data to create apps. So for example, the phylogeny group, we're, we're asking to come up with an output based on the, on the, on the data generated by this, uh, this workflow, uh, which will be updated every, every time somebody pushes data into the system. Okay. Another uh, workflow will be that uh, data, once it's there, it can be prepared for submitting to EBI or GIS, GIS-8. And so it's, it's, it's a system that can run and operate in parallel to these systems and help people upload their data. And lowering the barrier to entry and giving people um, you know, uh, additional functionality, we hope that to encourage people to use the system to at least you know, to try. So the, the script is being developed under this uh, GitHub repository. And um, 
yeah, if people are interested in you know in the outputs um, and use them in their in their applications, please please contact us. Thank you. Thank you, Pietro. We will also have a webinar tomorrow about Arvados and uh, common borrow languages as well. And for COVID-19 fix, so we have uh, Bonface. Not sure if I'm pronouncing your name correctly. You are a panelist, so you should be um, um, able to unmute yourself. Hello. Oh, yes. Perfect. You're yeah. here. Okay. Please go ahead. Um, so what I'm working on is the COVID-19 feeds. Uh, the idea is to be able, uh, okay, right now in the hackathon, there are like a bunch of different channels. There's, uh, there's Twitter, there are people communicating from GitHub, like the issue trackers, other people using Slack aggressively, and there are some people on IRC. So the idea is to be able to fetch all this data from all these different places, aggregate them in one uh, central place and continuously update update it so that uh, if you're part of say the hackath the hackathon you only go to one place to get uh, important news. Uh, so so far I've been able to fetch data from Twitter, uh, GitHub. It's updated every 15 minutes. Uh, there's some tweaking I need to do, uh, but uh, so you can go to the feed and uh, have a look at it. So what's next? I would want to integrate Slack and also IRC, uh, improve uh, the CSS, that's like do the UI work and fine tune the feed in the sense of, uh, for example, in Slack, they're like... I think we, we lost you, you're here. Uh, so many times, oh, so yeah. how do I prioritize? Yes, yes, hello. Yes, so we, like, we can hear you again. Please oh, continue. Sorry. Oh, so what next is I want to add integration to Slack. The UI, improve the UI for the feed and also fine tune the feed in the sense of uh, prioritize what goes into the feed. So for example, in Slack, we have, uh, I think of uh, 15, 20 channels. So when I get that data, how do I figure out what's important from what's not important? Uh, in terms of uh, help, uh, it would be nice to get just any, anyone can contribute to the project. Um, I'm open to like um, any contributions whatsoever. And that's it. Good. Thank you very much. Yeah. Good. So more Twitter information we're getting here in this project. Uh, web development, not sure if uh, we have anyone for this topic. We kind of think they are distributed across all the different topics, working on end user interfaces. So I think uh, with Hebon Fasen and the COVID fits, uh, we got to the end of the presentation about the projects. Thank you very much to all the presenters. Uh, remember, please, that the available resources, computing resources, uh, we are putting them here in this uh, markdown on our wiki. If you want to contribute with computing resources, please add the information there so everybody has access to it.